Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. There still seems to be lots of confusion about why your receiver doesn't power up from your flight controller board when you're just using USB power. Today, I'll try and explain why this happens and why it's not really a problem. I think we all know that if you connect your flight controller board to your computer with a USB lead, it will generally power up. You'll see some LEDs flashing and maybe hear a few beeps from your buzzer if it's connected. You can then connect the board and use the configurator app to change settings like PIDs and so on. And these days, flight controllers are pretty easy to wire up and most supply a suitable 5 volts to power your RC receiver. And if not, then it's also common for PDBs to have a regulated 5 volt supply available from the main LiPo battery. And with the popularity of the all-in-one boards, the need to have a separate battery eliminator circuit somewhere on your quad is rare these days. So when you built your own quad or bought a bind and fly or just added a receiver to an almost ready to fly quad, there's times when you need to power the receiver while setting things up. You'll at least need it powered up to bind your transmitter and receiver. You'll also need it powered up to set up any switches you've configured on your transmitter to do things on your quad like arm switches and flight mode switches. But here's the confusion. On some quads your receiver powers up when you connect your USB lead and with others it doesn't. And this is completely dependent on how and where your receiver is getting its power and sometimes on just how your flight controller board has been designed. If you've built your own quad then you'll know where the receiver is getting its power because you wired it up. But if it's a bind and fly you just won't know. And given the current popularity of bind and fly quads the flight controller board may also be custom and you won't have a hope of knowing where the power comes from or where it's activated. Also on some flight controllers that supply 5 volts to the receiver it's specifically designed not to connect the power through unless the main battery is actually connected. So on USB power, the receiver won't power up. The only way to find out is to plug your USB lead in and see if the receiver powers up. Just look for some telltale LEDs lighting up to let you know that it's on. If it doesn't, this isn't something you need to worry about because you can just connect your LiPo battery, but you do need to take a bit of care. Most flight controller boards are designed to cope with two power sources. The configurator apps generally allow you to test motors so the board needs USB and a LiPo battery. And it uses some diodes to prevent any feedback voltage and current problems. And if you're feeling uneasy about this you can always use a USB hub to insulate your quad from your expensive computer. But I've never felt the need to do this. Now this is probably the first time you've connected your quad to a battery and it's important to take a few precautions. The first thing is to remove the props. You never quite know what a quad is going to do when you plug a battery in for the first time and the last thing you want is a few missing fingers. Next, trust no one. It doesn't matter if you've carefully built the quad yourself or it's a fresh from the supplier bind and fly quad, you must check there's no short circuit across the battery input leads. Just connect a multimeter in its continuity or resistance mode across the input connector to make sure there's no short circuit. You can use a smoke stopper for this, but I'd rather know if there's a short before I even connect a battery. If there is a short, you need to investigate and fix it. And if you don't, it'll ruin your day with blown electronics. One last thing to remember is to attach a VTX antenna. Because you're connecting a battery, the VTX transmitter will probably power up as well. And if there isn't an antenna connected, the output stage can get very hot and fry the drivers. Some transmitters are capable of detecting this and will automatically switch to a low power or a pit mode, but I never take the chance. So there we go. You can now attach a battery and your receiver should power up and you can bind it and do whatever other setup you need to do. And hopefully that's cleared up any confusion. And if you found that useful and want updates, please like and subscribe to the channel down here. It really does help me make better content. I'll see you next time.